Hi, my name is Ravi. Today I am going to demonstrate you how a first look sensor reveals misfiring cylinder on exhaust pressure pulse waveform. Hold on, I am going to explain in depth of exhaust pressure pulse waveform analysis in this video. So, today I am working on Honda Fit Area 2006 4 cylinder car came here with a misfire. First of all, I did a pre scan and tried to find which cylinder is misfiring. But unfortunately, no misfire code or misfire data available for this model. This car has a uniform pattern of a misfire at the idle line in the low RPM. I tried to find the misfire data in the scan data, unfortunately, not available. So, I will demonstrate to you here. I am going to tap the read fault code again to show you. And go to the read current DTCs. Look at that, no trouble code in the engine control module. So next I am going to the read data stream to find any misfire data or misfire count in the data stream. Select all and set OK. Here we get the data list. So I am going to roll over the data list to find any data available for the misfire counting. No, no, I can find any data for misfire counting, no any data pit. That is unfortunate and this is a one of disadvantage for this model that we not get misfire data. So we have to use another method to find which cylinder is misfiring now. Before go to the next test, I start the engine and will let you hear the misfire from engine side. Okay, here you can see little shake of the engine as it is misfiring but hard to hear the misfire. Therefore, I will take you to the tailpipe side and let you hear the misfire from the tailpipe. Hope you can hear and feel the misfire from the tailpipe side. Definitely there is a misfire. So, my next game plan is put a pressure pulse sensor into the tailpipe and get the exhaust pressure pulse waveform and analysis it for find the misfire. Anyway, let's go to the test. Here is my pressure pulse sensor same as $100 worth first look sensor. Okay, I am going to hook up this pulse sensor into the tailpipe and attach a second channel on number 1 ignition coil trigger signal as a sync channel to identify which cylinder is misfiring by applying the firing order. I will show you where is my second channel goes. Here you can see I have back probed already number 1 ignition coil trigger signal as a sync channel. Okay, let's go and set up the oscilloscope. Here is my HS502 oscilloscope laying on the floor. So let's connect it to the tablet and open the Hscope application. Waveform is being recorded. So we don't need to record longer time period because it has a constant misfire. I just record several seconds and stop the recording. And I need to save this file for the analysis. Okay, we take this file and analyze it peacefully. Okay, I brought my tablet onto the workbench here. So, I will zoom in the waveform and let's start to analyze it. You can see here this red trace is ignition trigger signal as the sync channel. The blue trace is exhaust pressure pulse signal. I have shared this waveform file with one of my other tablet which has installed Hscope app already. Here is that tablet. This tablet has a bigger screen so we can analyze this waveform much comfortably. Okay, let's zoom it in the waveform and take a closer look. In this waveform, you can see here green trace is ignition trigger signal and the yellow trace is exhaust pressure pulse waveform. So I will separate ignition trigger signal to better view. Anyway, do you see that one pulse has pulled down deeper than the others in the yellow trace of exhaust pressure pulse waveform in a uniform pattern? Here and here and all along the way one pulse has pulled down deeper than the others. That is where the misfire occurred. Now we need to identify which cylinder is misfiring exactly. For that we can put a piston overlay chart between two ignition trigger signals. So Hscope has built in piston overlay chart handy and super convenient to use. I put this overlay chart here now you can see here and now I am going to set the firing order. In this specific car firing order is 1342. So I put the 1342 as the firing order. Okay, I will align this overlay chart between two trigger signals. Then we can identify which cylinder is misfiring exactly. Super easy. In this chart, this red color square is for the expansion stroke and dark red is for the exhaust and yellow is for the intake stroke and brown is for the compression stroke. 
so we are looking for this dark red uh, square because that one represent the exhaust stroke in this picture we have to find which cylinder exhaust stroke is aligned with this deeper pool where occur the misfire so this column aligned with the deeper pool where occurred the misfire if we go cross row along the exhaust stroke we meet number three so number three cylinder is the misfiring cylinder according to this chart that is clear misfiring cylinder is the other one next to the ignition trigger signal so you can remember it and then we go along the waveform here you can see the other one next to the ignition trigger signal is the misfire so same cylinder number three cylinder here also same so all along the way number three cylinder has misfired constant misfire anyway guys don't you have any thoughts that how this exhaust pressure pulse waveform reveals a misfiring cylinder or otherwise how this exhaust pressure pulse signal reveal the condition in the cylinder let's talk about that in depth you see this pressure pulse has been pulled down deeper in the misfiring cylinder not only the misfiring cylinder but also all the other cylinders pressure pulse also have been pulled down how it could be happen i am going to explain this matter in depth today for that i will use the in cylinder pressure waveform for further clarification okay here i have loaded in cylinder pressure waveform into my other tablet but before start to this analysis i would like to remind you don't mix these two waveforms the other one which we shows earlier it was a exhaust pressure pulse waveform this one is in cylinder pressure waveform we take in cylinder pressure waveform using a pressure transducer but we take exhaust pressure pulse using a pressure pulse sensor please don't mix it and listen carefully you can understand and you can make sense what i am explaining pressure pulse sensor not measuring the real pressure in a system where we put a pressure pulse sensor it only report that pressure increasing or decreasing that means the pressure pulse but pressure transducers can use for measure the pressure in a system to get the value of a pressure in bar or psi anyway guys i have put the 720 rulers layout between two compression tower to separate the four stroke so then it will easy for us to analyze from here 0 to 180 degrees power stroke is going on and 180 to 360 exhaust stroke going on and 360 to 540 uh, intake stroke and then 540 to uh, 720 compression stroke going on these are basic things you guys know already but this time i am going to only talk about the exhaust stroke in this waveform because it will help us to clarify the exhaust pressure pulse waveform you can see this vacuum pocket where end of the power stroke and beginning of the exhaust stroke. At this time piston is at the bottom dead center. In the cylinder has a negative state of pressure. This vacuum pocket indicate that negative pressure. But exhaust valve is open right at this point where close to the 180 degrees. Just imagine what happened when the exhaust valve is opened. In this pocket that means in the cylinder has negative state of pressure. But outside of the cylinder, that means onward to the exhaust manifold, has positive pressure. Positive pressure means atmospheric pressure. You know that the theory is positive pressure always flow into the negative pressure. As the theory, this positive state of pressure, that means atmospheric pressure, escape into the cylinder where it has the negative state of pressure. Simultaneously, piston is moving onward to the top depth center. Until cylinder is coming to the half of top dead center, this positive state of pressure escaping into the cylinder and fill the cylinder with air. Then until piston comes other half to the top dead center, push the filled air in the cylinder back into the exhaust manifold. And here near the 360 degrees, exhaust valve is closed and concludes the exhaust event. Anyway, we just analyzed the exhaust event in this waveform from inside the cylinder. Now let's go back into the exhaust pressure pulse waveform where we took from end of the tailpipe. Remember that these pressure pulse are in the exhaust pipe. It report pressure changes in the exhaust manifold and the tailpipe, not in the cylinder. That is very important. Okay, let's apply now what we saw at the exhaust event in the in-cylinder pressure waveform into this exhaust pressure pulse waveform. 
For that, I apply again 720 degrees ruler layout between number 1 ignition trigger signals. Okay, this is number 1 ignition trigger signal where the number 1 cylinder firing event. After 180 degrees of this firing event, number 1 cylinder exhaust event start at this point. Okay, I just put a ruler here on 180 degrees mark. And then we know 180 degrees to 360 degrees exhaust event occur. So I will put a ruler at this point too. Now you can see in the exhaust event between these two pink rulers, there is a pull down pulse. So let's compare this exhaust event with the in cylinder pressure waveform exhaust event. Hope you remember that exhaust valve opened just before the 180 degrees on the in-cylinder pressure waveform. Here also you can see bit before 180 degrees, this pressure pulse start to change downward at this point. Why this pressure pulse start to go downward when start the exhaust event? Hope you remember that I explain on in-cylinder pressure waveform. When exhaust event start, there is a negative state of pressure in the cylinder and then atmospheric pressure in the exhaust manifold escape into the cylinder. You know that our pressure pulse sensor stay at the end of the tailpipe reporting the air pressure changes in the exhaust pipe. When the air escape into the cylinder from exhaust manifold, pressure goes down in the exhaust pipe. Then pressure pulse sensor report that pressure is going down by showing us this downward pulse. Then at this point, piston has come halfway onward to the TDC and cylinder has filled air completely and now piston push that air pressure into the exhaust manifold. Then the pressure pulse sensor stay at end of the tailpipe sense that exhaust pressure increasing. Then here at this point near 360 degrees mark exhaust valve is closed and conclude push all the air was in cylinder to exhaust manifold. That is how we show this pressure pulse pull up to here. Hope you make sense now that how exhaust pressure pulse pull down and pull up in the exhaust event. Okay, now let's talk about the next cylinder where the misfire occurred. Already you know now how exhaust pressure pulse pull down and pull up take place. But why this pressure pulse pull down deeper in the misfire event? Because of you know in a misfire event crankshaft velocity becomes slower. Then piston in the misfired cylinder also gets slower to travel TDC. And then air in the exhaust manifold has more time to escape much air into the cylinder while piston come halfway to the TDC. Escape more air into the cylinder from exhaust manifold beautifully reported by the pressure pulse sensor stay at the end of the tailpipe by showing us this deeper pool. Same thing happened while piston comes to the TDC. Push all the air in the cylinder into the manifold and increase the pressure in the tailpipe and show us this highly increased pulse than the others. So hope you guys make sense that how exhaust pressure pulse take place and analyze it to find the misfiring cylinder. In this specific car has number 3 cylinder misfire according to this analysis. But we need to find what caused to misfire number 3 cylinder. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Stay subscribed with us for more diagnostic videos.